This is Orbit Sim. It's an application that I've been working on for the past couple of months that allows you to simulate the orbit of satellites. And I wanted to create this video to show how to build it and give a little demo. So here is the GitHub repository for the project. And this is where you'll find the source code and the application itself. So if you just want to download it without actually building it yourself, you can just go to releases, download the zip file and run the executable. Um, but in this video, we're going to be showing you how to build this yourself um, in case you want to, you know, make modifications or um, improve it in any way. So um, what we'll do is we'll grab this link and we'll do git clone recursive and this should clone the project for us. Um, and some of the prerequisites that we're going to need is C++, um, the MSVC compiler, so the one that comes with Visual Studio is the one that's uh, used in the project. Um, CMake is going to be needed to build the project and one of the dependencies is the Vulkan SDK. So you'll need to have those set up before continuing. We're going to be building the project using CMake within Visual Studio code. So I'll open this up uh, using the um, CMake Pro Tools extension that allows you to build CMake projects within VS Code. So it looks like there's some type of some type of error here. So I'll just say yes. Um, this shouldn't happen for you guys. I don't know what's going on here, but um, looks like um, it worked out. So we can go ahead and open this folder that it's in, and it should be Orbit Sim and the folder within orbit sim called simulator is the one you want to open and now that it's open um you can see these cmake kind of tools kind of pop up here and can press build and it'll go ahead and start building the application um so within this folder uh, one of the folders is the dependencies folder and this is going to hold kind of the dependencies that um, Orbit Sim kind of relies on. So the first big one is called Walnut, which is in this main Walnut folder. And this is kind of like the backbone framework that we use to make the graphical user interface. Um, of course, I am GUI is what we use to also to um, make the user interface. Actually, pretty much all of these dependencies are for the user interface. So this is why we recursively clone the folder. Um, that's so that we can actually have these submodules in there. And then we have the source code in this source folder. So now that it's finished uh, building, we can go ahead and run it. So there we go. Um, and it's best to run this in full screen. So we'll go ahead and press start. And the first page that comes up is the um, Earth page or the Earth Orbit Viewer is what we call it. So you'll have Earth here. And then if you zoom out, with the scroll wheel, you can see there's another orbit and this is the moon. So kind of the controls to navigate is you can use a scroll wheel to zoom um, and then middle mouse button to pan around with the mouse. And then you can use shift plus the middle mouse button to rotate. So these are the same controls used in um, a CAD program called Fusion 360. So I just kind of copied those. So on the side, we have some controls here. The first are the time controls. So this, um, this simulator kind of just starts off January 1st, 2000 at 12 a.m., which isn't really ideal, I guess, since um, there are satellites back in the 20th century, but um, that's super easy to change. But um, we have three buttons, so you can like accelerate time and make time faster. So if we zoom out here to the moon's orbit, if we accelerate time a bunch, you can see the moon starts moving quickly. And then you can pause time and resume time, things like that. The next are the camera controls. So the camera is pretty much what controls like the rotation, the zoom and the pan. And you can adjust the sensitivity of each of these, you know, types of settings here with these sliders. Next is a central body. So the central body is what all the satellites and the moon is orbiting about. And right now it's earth. So you can see it's a planet. It has a mass and radius. And has a thing called resolution. So you can see um, this earth that um, is being rendered here. The way that I've implemented this isn't actually the best way. Um, 
you can definitely tell that they're just just made up a bunch of triangles that are all pretty much one color and um, you can adjust the resolution to get subdivided to more triangles. The problem is um, once you once you do that, the performance you can see every 500 milliseconds we're getting a new frame. So the performance significantly decreases. So um, I like to keep it around five. So it's kind of a manageable um, kind of speed of rendering. Um, so yeah, this is one of the improvements that we have to make is to make this Earth not suck. Um, so next we have the target orbit and right now we only have one orbit if I can zoom out well here um, And that's the moon. So the target orbit um, I can show you in a sec But once you have like 30 or 40 satellites um, the target orbit is the one orbit that you're focused on um, So if you want to add more satellites, you just go to satellite search here and let's say we want to add Starlink satellites. So this this satellite search is based off of the Celestrack database, so pretty much every single satellite um, in existence, or at least the ones we know about. Um, so you can select the satellites that you want to add. So let's, we can just add these three satellites and then maybe like this one. And then you can just press add to sim and these satellites will appear um, in orbit around Earth. So target orbit is the one that we're focused on. So if we want, now that we've added satellites, we can make the Starlink satellite the target orbit. You can see now the, the selected orbit is pink and the moon is going to be that kind of yellow color now. And then now it shows you all the information about this satellite we've selected, um, which is all, I think, pretty accurate, except for the mass, because the database that I used didn't come with a satellite mass. So um, just assumes that the mass is 1,000 kilograms. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. We can accelerate time with these satellites here and see them move around a little bit, um, stuff like that. So that's pretty much the extent of the whole simulator. Um, you can, I guess, go back to satellite search from here and go back to the Earth orbit viewer. Those are pretty much the two scenes that you get. Um, so. Yeah, so some future um, features that I'm planning to add is, um, of course, not to make this look, this central body Earth look horrible, and maybe add some support for other types of systems, maybe like the solar system, um, things like that, or like Jupiter and all its moons, things like that. And also, um, there's no way to, like to see how the orbits change with um, time. So if, I don't know, if this pink satellite decided to fire up its thrusters and change its orbit. You can't simulate that. The orbits are pretty much static here. Um, so it's kind of right now just a visualization of you can add like all the satellites that are currently in orbit. But the problem is um, you can't add like all, like I think there's about 8,000 satellites in here. So if I try adding 57 satellites here, um, it it's, the performance gets super slow. Um, so maybe we could lower the resolution, but get super slow and kind of buggy. So it's kind of not a good idea to, it can't really handle more than like 50 satellites right now. So definitely maybe like optimizing that's also in the future plans. Um, so I guess right now we could also kind of jump into the source code a little bit, just a quick little overview. So right here is the entry point. Um, so where the application kind of starts. So we pretty much make a layer that is passed into Walnut. So all we have to do is make this layer and pass it into Walnut and Walnut will handle all the kind of just like the rendering of everything that's going on here. So um, this layer is determined by application.cpp where we have all these different scenes. So we have the opening scene, the earth orbit viewer, the object viewer and the satellite search. So the opening scene is just that first screen you guys saw of just the Mars and the start button. The Earth orbit viewer is um, this screen right here with the Earth and all the satellites going around it. The object viewer is something we haven't implemented yet. It's not an accessible scene um, that we've worked on, but it's just there for the future. And then the satellite search is that whole database where you can add satellites. So pretty much each of these scenes has their own little class that um, inherits from this scene class. Um, and pretty much we have a buffer. We have a buffer of pixels um, here. 
that is the size of the window and every single loop um i guess we can go here pretty much every single loop we're changing the buffer with what we make and then displaying giving that putting that onto the layer and then passing it over to the walnut so for instance in earth orbit viewer scene um, this is a child class of the scene class we're pretty much making all these i am gui components for um for the ui render and then we're also within the actual draw um we're drawing the earth and adding that to the image buffer um drawing the orbits adding those to the image buffer and then passing that over to application um if it's called and then which passes onto the walnut layer so that's pretty much how it works um it's basically a state machine which is honestly the best uh thing for this um, and then we have other stuff like in core, this is just all the stuff that handles the orbit. So it, all these files here in orbit calculate the orbital mechanics that the sim runs on. So yeah, overall it's super simple. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little demo. Um, I'd really love your feedback. Go ahead and try this app out for yourself and just let me know what we can improve. Um, and if you have any questions or comments like that, you can just leave them down below. Um, so yeah, so hopefully you guys try this out and like it. Um, yeah, and other than that, have a great day.